One of the most common applications of nonlinear systems of ordinary differential equations are the so-called predator-prey or lotka volterra systems. These systems arise when two species interact, one as the prey and one as the predator. These equations also see applications in economics and in chemical reactions. In biology, this system of equations explains the natural periodic variations of populations of different species in nature. Before the application of differential equations, these periodic variations in the population baffled biologists. We will keep with the classic example of hares and foxes in a forest. It is the easiest to understand. Rex equals the number of hares, the prey, and y equals the number of foxes, the predator. When there are a lot of hares, there is plenty of food for the foxes, so the fox population grows. However, when the fox population grows, the foxes eat more hares, so when there are lots of foxes, the hare population should go down and vice versa. The Lotka Volterra model proposes that this behavior is described by the following system of differential equations. X prime equals the quantity A minus BY times X, and Y prime equals the quantity CX minus D times Y, where A, B, C, and D are some parameters that describe the interaction of the foxes and hares. In this model, these are all positive numbers. And now let's analyze the idea behind this model. The model is a slightly more complicated idea based on the exponential population model. So given the two differential equations, if we expand, we have x prime equals ax minus byx, and y prime equals cxy minus dy. The hares are expected to simply grow exponentially in the absence of foxes. That is where the ax terms comes in. The growth in population is proportional to the population itself. So looking at our equation for x prime, if y is zero, again, notice how we have just x prime equals ax. We are assuming the hares always find enough food and have enough space to reproduce. However, there is another component, the minus byx. That is, the population also is decreasing proportional to the number of foxes. Together, we write the equation as x prime equals the quantity a minus by times x. So it is like exponential growth or decay, but the constant depends on the number of foxes. The foxes need food, the hares, to reproduce. The more food, the bigger the rate of growth, hence the cyx term in the equation for y prime. On the other hand, there are natural deaths in the fox population, and hence the term minus dy. And now let's look at a specific example. Let's consider the system x prime equals the quantity 0.4 minus 0.01y times x, and y prime equals the quantity 0.003x minus 0.3 times y. Below we have a graph of the face portrait for the system, as well as a graph of x and y. Let's look at this on the next slide. On the left, again, we have the face portrait for the predator-prey model. In this example, it makes sense to also plot x and y as graphs with respect to time, which we see on the right. Therefore, the second graph, again, the graph on the right, is the graph of x and y on the vertical axis against time on the horizontal axis. The particular solution graphed was with initial conditions of 20 foxes and 50 hares. Looking at the vertical axis, we can now tell that the red graph is the graph for the foxes, and the blue graph is the graph for the hares. And now going back to our specific system, let's determine the critical points, classify them, and also determine the equation of the trajectories. Recall to find the critical points, we need to determine the ordered pairs where both x prime and y prime are equal to zero, which results in the system shown here. Notice both systems are satisfied when x and y are both zero. The system is also satisfied when x is 100 and y is 40, giving us a second critical point of 100 comma 40. Notice that 0.003x minus 0.3 is zero when x is 100, and 0.4 minus 0.01y is zero when y is 40. The critical point zero comma zero is when there are zero hares and zero foxes, the critical point 100 comma 40 is when there are 100 hares and 40 foxes. For the next step, we determine the Jacobian matrix, where f of x comma y is equal to x prime, and g of x comma y is equal to y prime. For the entries in the Jacobian matrix, the partial of f with respect to x is 0 0.4 minus 0.01y, the partial of f with respect to y is negative 0.01x. In the second row, the partial of g with respect to x is 0.003y, and the partial of g with respect to y is 0.003x minus 0.3.
And now we determine the Jacobian matrix at the critical points and then determine the corresponding eigenvalues. Recall the types of eigenvalues, in most cases, help us classify the critical point. At the critical point 0, 0, the Jacobian has entries 0, 0.4, 0, 0, negative 0, 0.3. Recall to find the corresponding eigenvalues, we set up and solve the equation, the determinant of the difference of j and lambda i equals 0, which in this case results in lambda, the eigenvalues, equal negative 0, 0.3 and 0, 0.4. Recall because we have two real eigenvalues with opposite sign, the critical point 0, 0, is a saddle. This should make sense. If you start with some foxes with no hairs, then the foxes would grow extinct, that is, you would approach the origin. If you start with no foxes and a few hairs, then the hairs would just keep multiplying without check, and so you would go away from the origin, which is verified analyzing the vector field. And now we consider the critical point 100, 40, where the Jacobian matrix has entries 0, negative 1, 0, 0.120. 0. In this case, the eigenvalues are lambda equals plus or minus i times the square root of 0, 0.12. Notice the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, which is the case where we cannot quite classify the critical point using only linearization. We could have a stable center, a spiral sink, or a spiral source. That is, the equilibrium could be asymptotically stable, stable, or unstable. Of course, the previous face portrait, which I've shown below, seems to imply we have a stable center, but we can't just trust the picture. Perhaps the oscillations are getting larger and larger, but only very slowly. Of course, this would be a bad result, as it would imply something will go wrong with our population sooner or later. We also only graphed a specific example with specific trajectories. So how can we be sure that we are in a stable situation at the critical point 100, 40? As we said before, in the case of purely imaginary eigenvalues, we have to do a bit more work. Let's see if we can find the equations of the trajectories. To do this, we will consider dy dx. Recall dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt, which we have resulting in the following quotient. And we can solve this differential equation using separation of variables. If we separate the variables, the result is the quantity 0 0.4 minus 0.01y divided by y dy equals the quantity 0.003x minus 0.3 divided by x dx. Next, we integrate both sides of the equation, and the result is 0.04 natural log absolute y of y minus 0.01y equals 0.003x minus 0.3 natural log absolute y of x plus c. Let's go ahead and solve this for c. And now we have the equation for the trajectories, Given a particular value of c, we can graph a trajectory. So now let's graph some of the trajectories. I've used Desmos for the graph on the right. Notice on the left, I used c equals 1.8, 1.92, 2.1, and 2.15. Notice the trajectories are closed loops around the critical point 100, 40. We now know the critical point 100, 40 is a center and is a stable equilibrium point. We do not have to worry about the foxes or hares going extinct or their populations exploding. I hope you found this helpful.